In the last video, I looked at some of the problems in Luke's genealogy of Jesus. This time, I'll be focusing on the genealogy in Matthew. Because I'll be looking into a few different issues, I'll be splitting this video up into different parts. One of the first things you might notice when comparing these two genealogies is that Luke's is longer. Counting from Abraham down to Jesus, Luke contains 16 more names than Matthew. Let's say a generation is 25 to 30 years. If I removed 16 of my ancestors, I may have been born instead in the 16th century, during the lifetime of either Copernicus or Galileo. So a difference of 16 generations is quite a discrepancy. Now, because the list of names in Matthew and Luke are almost completely different from King David onwards, it's not simply a case of comparing the two and noting which names Matthew missed out. We can, however, compare Matthew's names with the Old Testament, as it appears he is lifting names straight out of the Book of Chronicles. Note that the spelling of some of these names may differ between Bible translations, depending on which original manuscripts were used. When we compare 1 Chronicles with Matthew, we find that Matthew has omitted at least four names from the list. Ahaziah, Joash, Amaziah, and Jehoiakim. Why is Matthew skipping names? One apologetic is that these men were evil kings, and so their names were blotted out. A problem with this is that many kings remaining on Matthew's list were also considered evil. In fact, two missing names, Joash and Amaziah, were actually good kings to begin with, but later turned away from God like King Solomon. Whereas many other kings listed by Matthew were described as evil right from the beginning. There is an additional name missing, Padiah. According to 1 Chronicles, Zerubbabel's father is not Shealtiel, but is Padiah, Shealtiel's brother. When New Testament authors quoted the Old Testament, it is generally recognized that they usually used the Septuagint, which is the Greek version of the Old Testament. However, there are different variants of the Septuagint, which contain different readings. At least one variant does indeed state that Zerubbabel's father is Shealtiel. So in this instance, Matthew may have simply copied the reading he had in front of him, rather than make any changes himself. Elsewhere in scripture, we see Shealtiel and Zerubbabel listed as father and son, so perhaps this reading is correct. Although, of course, there are apologetic attempts to claim that both readings are correct, and they try to harmonize the two. Now Luke also lists Shealtiel and Zerubbabel, but how can that be? Remember that Luke's genealogy goes through Nathan, and Matthew's genealogy goes through Solomon. Nathan and Solomon are brothers. They can't both be paternal ancestors of Zerubbabel. Some Christians say one genealogy must be referring to a different Shealtiel and Zerubbabel. Would you find that convincing? We have another problem. What about the names listed after Zerubbabel? In 1 Chronicles, we see that Zerubbabel has a number of sons, yet none of them are named Abiud. Due to translation issues, Abiud may also be known as Obadiah. There is an Obadiah listed in Zerubbabel's family, but it's his great-great-great-grandson. So at best, Matthew omits more names. As for the rest of these names, a couple of them can be found here and there in the Old Testament, but they do not appear to be related to the people listed in Matthew. Christian scholar Robert Gundry essentially finds many of these names to be a fabrication. His controversial commentary on Matthew suggests that Matthew was picking and choosing names from the Old Testament, often altering the spelling of names in the process, perhaps to avoid detection. He theorizes that Matthew had a copy of the same genealogy that Luke uses, or at least a similar copy, and that Matthew used this as a basis for his own list of names. 
So in summary, we can use 1 Chronicles to show that Matthew omitted a number of names in his genealogy of Jesus. At best, this indicates that the genealogy is not accurate and is incomplete. Additionally, differences between Septuagint variants cause more discrepancies. Who are Joseph's real ancestors? It's starting to get messy and we've only just begun. Thanks for watching.